Welcome to the St. Tammany Parish, Louisiana Feasibility Study Public Meeting. My name is Amy Dixon. I'm a project manager from the United States Army Corps of Engineers in New Orleans. I am the lead for this project team and point of contact for the public. We will also be hearing from Everard Baker, our environmental specialist, during this presentation. Other team members, including engineers and economists, are standing by to answer questions at the end of the presentation. We are about 18 months into a three-year study process. We are actively engaged with our non-federal sponsor, the Louisiana Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority, or CPRA, as well as the St. Tammany Parish Government, the St. Tammany Levy Drainage and Conservation District, and city officials within St. Tammany Parish. We have received a great deal of information from these entities and are appreciative of all of their input in this ongoing effort. USACE undertook this study to confirm a federal interest in the study area, identify and evaluate an array of alternative plans, and make a recommendation for action or inaction. The draft report, which was released for a review, documents the plan formulation process and recommends a tentatively selected plan or TSP for implementation. The selection of the TSP is based on consideration of associated economic benefits, environmental outputs, environmental and social impacts, cost and residual risk. The TSP is considered tentatively selected until a recommended plan from the final report is approved by USACE headquarters. The key to this meeting is to gather input on our TSP. The dialogue will help us shape this process moving forward. The St. Tammany Parish Feasibility Study is a flood risk management and coastal storm risk management study that was authorized by the Water Infrastructure Improvements for the Nation Act or WIN Act of 2016 and funded through the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2018. The study area encompasses all of St. Tammany Parish, which is approximately 1,100 square miles and is located in southeastern Louisiana. St. Tammany Parish is home to over 250,000 residents. Through information we received from the parish government, along with the document and flooding impacts from FEMA flood claims, prior reports, and input we received from citizens through public meetings, we were able to narrow down our focus to those areas with flooding issues. The study area has complex hydrology and experiences repeated damages from various types of flood events, including, but not limited to, storm surge, rave action, rainfall, riverine, and high tide. There are areas with coastal flooding issues and areas that have more riverine or inland rainfall flooding, and some areas have multiple sources of flooding. Under USACE planning, these two types of flooding are denoted as FRM and CSRM, where FRM is the inland rainfall riverine flooding, and CSRM captures the coastal forces and storms such as hurricanes. The study area includes 36 distinct hydrologic subbasins as defined by USGS HUC 12 boundaries. And those that are highlighted is what we use in initial planning to develop measures and alternatives. I would like to now introduce you to Everard Baker, the environmental specialist on our team. He is going to discuss the meeting purpose and introduce environmental policy before we discuss the tentatively selected plan. Hello, I'm Everard Baker. I am a biologist and the environmental manager on this study. Today, we are here to inform you about the St. Anthony study. The draft report is available for public review now until July 26, 2021, and it provides information on how the tentatively selected plan selected, describing the details of the TSP and how the study is complying with the National Environmental Policy Act. Our main goal for this meeting is to hear from the public. We would like to hear your thoughts on the tentatively selected plan. This is an opportunity for the public as well as other government agencies and partners to have their voices heard. On June 11, 2021, the draft integrated feasibility report and environmental impact statement were released for public review and can be viewed on the website listed on this slide. We are asking the public to review the information provided and give feedback on the tentatively selected plan. All comments and information are welcome. We have multiple avenues to get in touch with us, including this public meeting, email, and traditional mail. All of the comments we receive will be responded to in the final draft of this feasibility report. NEPA was signed into law by President Nixon on January 1st, 1970. It is the underlying environmental law requiring all federal agencies to notify the public of proposed actions, solicit their input, develop and evaluate a range of alternatives, and explain how decisions were reached. 
Additional environmental laws like the Endangered Species Act and the National Historic Preservation Act, among many others, are working in tandem with NEPA to ensure that the Army Corps of Engineers considers impacts to human and natural resources and identifies how to first avoid and then mitigate adverse impacts where unavoidable. We are at a stage of the NEPA process where we have identified our purpose and need, considered a range of alternatives and their impacts with input from the public. Currently, the Corps has identified a tentatively selected plan and is notifying the public through this public meeting and draft report of the proposed action and requesting your input. I'm now going to transition the slides back to Amy to talk about the study milestones and planning process that led to selection of the TSP. Thank you, Everard. We are about halfway through the three-year study. This timeline is set by Congress under the 3x3 three three study parameters. We have three years and $3 million to complete this feasibility study. With a start in January of 2020, we have completed two major milestones on schedule. The most recent milestone was the tentatively selected plan milestone, where we briefed vertically to the senior members of the Corps and gained approval to move to the next phase of the study. We're at the point of the study where we will go into review. While the public has the opportunity to, to review, we are also completing policy and legal, agency technical, and independent external peer reviews. The plan formulation process and tentatively selected plan will be scrutinized during this phase. Our next major milestone will be the agency decision milestone in August of 2021. At this point, the senior USACE members will approve moving forward with the selected plan and we will continue to refine the details of that plan. This will lead us to final reviews and submittal of the Chief's report to USACE headquarters. Our study area is all of St. Tammany Parish. The documented sources of flooding and flood damages in the study area are from multiple sources, including storm surge, waves, rainfall, and riverine bank overtopping. These flood events have increased the risk to life and safety, increased risk of flood damages to property and critical infrastructure, including the interstates. There have been economic losses from these different flooding events and increased risk to damage or loss of historic structures within the parish. We know that the ecological habitat is being lost and that the ecological habitat is a type of natural resiliency and risk reduction for some flooding events. Sea level rise and subsidence are expected to continue, which will increase flood risk. Our objectives in the study area are to address the documented problems. We have specifically looked into addressing reductions to flood damages to structures, risk to public health and safety, and interruptions to the nation's transportation corridors. Another aspect of the objectives are tied to increasing community resiliency, including the ability of a community to prepare for and recover from a flooding event. This includes reducing potential flooding to evacuation routes. Federal projects do have some constraints as well. For example, several waterways in St. Tammany Parish were initially screened out from consideration because they did not meet the minimum cubic feet per second minimum of 800 CFS. In addition, the United States Army Corps of Engineers process requires that we maximize net benefits and have a benefit to cost ratio above unity or above one. Early and continued coordination with public stakeholders and other agencies is an essential part of the study development and planning process. This coordination helps in determining the appropriate level of documentation and analysis needed, developing and refining the study purpose, goals, objectives, constraints, and the range of alternatives to consider. Agency coordination helps us determine impacts to resources, possible mitigation measures, and opportunities for environmental enhancement as well as identifying the NEPA and permit requirements of other agencies. Since the start of the study, we have been actively engaged with our non-federal sponsor, CPRA, as well as the St. Tammany Parish government, the levy district, and city officials within the parish. During the early phases of the project planning, we held two public information meetings, one in February of 2020 at the Mandeville Community Center, and another also in February at the Slidell Civic Auditorium. Subsequently, two NEPA scoping meetings were conducted virtually via Facebook Live due to the COVID-19 pandemic. These were completed in July of 2020, with live feeds providing interaction with the public very similar to this meeting. The purpose of these meetings 
was to present with stakeholders and the public alternative plans that had been developed and were being considered under the study and to obtain feedback to ensure that the study area problems were being addressed. Both meetings were recorded and shared with the public on the study website. The United States Army Corps of Engineers uses a six step planning process, which is a structured approach to problem solving for the water resource studies. The outcome of the planning process as performed up to the date of the release of the draft report is the identification of the TSP or tentatively selected plan. A total of 208 site specific management measures or potential solutions to reduce flooding were identified and compiled during the study from previous reports input from the non-federal sponsor, stakeholders, and the public, as well as recommendations from the Project Delivery Team, or PDT. The measures were evaluated by the PDT using a screening process based on the planning objectives, existing data, professional judgment, avoiding constraints, and addressing the opportunities and problems. After screening the measures, the measures that remained were grouped together based on geographic area in the parish to develop the initial array of 13 alternatives, which included 61 site-specific management measures. For example, all measures to reduce flooding in Mandeville were grouped into an alternative, and those that looked at reducing flooding in Slidell were grouped into a separate alternative. These alternatives and measures and the potential solutions for the various areas were considered separately throughout the study. Each time we started the process over with more information on each measure, screening out unjustified features or structures, and continuing work on the remaining measures. The level of detail for the screenings between alternative arrays varied, but in general were informed by economic and hydrologic and hydraulic modeling of both riverine and coastal flood events, cost estimates, engineering design, environmental impacts and compensatory mitigation, risk estimates and potential life safety concerns were also factored into these analyses. Through the iterations of this process, the team narrowed the focus from many alternatives and management measures to a smaller array of alternatives and measures. In the final iteration, the PDT selected the TSP. The measures that made it through the final screening were independent from each other and combinable to form the comprehensive TSP for the project. Our recommendation for the study is a combination of four projects in different parts of the parish. Throughout the study process, we considered three types of measures to reduce flood risk, including structural, non-structural, and nature-based measures. Structural measures are physical modifications designed to reduce the frequency of damaging levels of flood inundation, such as a pump station or a flood wall. Non-structural measures differ from structural measures in that they focus on reducing consequences of flooding instead of focusing on reducing the extent of flooding. For example, you would move what gets damaged from the flood waters rather than moving the actual flood water. Non-structural measures include modifying homes, businesses, and other facilities to reduce flood damages by elevating structures or removing them from the floodplain. Nature-based measures work with or restore natural processes within the aim of wave attenuation, storm surge reduction, slow and store flood waters, wetlands or coastal habitat to store inland water. This is a visual of the initial array we started with that included 61 measures grouped into 13 different alternatives or geographic areas. There are the areas where alternatives and measures were initially proposed to address flooding across the parish. The measures in the initial array included detention ponds, channel improvements such as dredging, clearing and snagging, or widening of a channel. Alternatives also include diversion channels, pump stations, levees, floodgates, and nature-based flood risk reduction items such as marsh creation, shoreline protection, and breakwaters. The geographic areas for the alternatives included Lacombe, Bayou Liberty, Bayou Vincent, and Bayou Bancuca, Slidell, 
Upper Chifuncta and Covington, Mandeville, Abita Springs, and the Bogachitta to address flooding to Bush and Sun in the north. Using the iterative process discussed before, we screened down those 61 measures into the final array as seen here through various screening steps. We continued to develop the details and analyze the measures until we were able to screen them down to eight alternatives with 27 measures in six separate areas as seen here. It was in July of 2020 that we came out for our initial set of public meetings and discussed these measures in detail with the public obtaining your feedback on this final array of alternatives. The input gained from the public helped us to refine our analysis and inform selection of the TSP that we are now presenting. Within the final array for coastal storm risk management, we evaluated levee features in Slidell and moving westward to Bayou Bonfuca and some over in Lacombe. We also evaluated seawall improvements and pump station alternatives in Mandeville. For riverine flood risk management, measures included channel improvements in Covington, detention ponds, and clearing and snagging in the Bayou Liberty and Bayou Bonfuca areas, and a levee along the Pearl River. Channel improvements and a potential diversion canal in the eastern parts of the parish were also considered. The highlighted items were those that are ultimately in the TSP. In the next few slides, we will give an overview of the process used to get from this final array to the TSP. While we looked at all of the structural measures listed in the previous slide, we also looked at the non-structural alternatives for the parish. What this means is we looked at all of the homes, businesses, buildings within the parish and analyzed what we could do for them if we did not build a levee or a new seawall. The non-structural portion of the plan looks at voluntary raising or flood proofing structures so that their risk for flood damages will be reduced. Here you can see the number of structures within the parish that are built within a floodplain. The different colored dots represents different flood panes we identified in each area that where structures were experiencing flooding. So you can see the different 10, 25, 50, and 100 year floodplains that were considered during the analysis. The team used two different economic models to look at the multiple sources of flooding across the parish. Each source of flooding was investigated. The team analyzed the 100 year, 50 year, 25 year and 10 year floodplains and the structures within that floodplain that were receiving flood damages. Benefits were calculated by looking at the reducing the cost of damages as we, if we elevated and flood proofed these homes in each floodplain and then benefit to cost ratios were determined. The benefit to cost ratios were then compared to the benefit to cost ratios for structural features in the area that had both types of alternatives to determine which was more effective. This graphic illustrates more closely how we looked at the structures in a given floodplain. The variations of blue color that you see are the modeling results shown by the estimated inundation or water levels in this specific area for the 2% annual exceedance percentage or 50 year floodplain. Each dot is a structure within the inundation area. In this example, the structures are included in the 50 year floodplain and are eligible for voluntary raising or flood proofing. Flooding from local rainfall and riverine floods was modeled separately from coastal storm flooding. Flood risk management alternative measures were modeled for the start and end of the 50 year window we evaluated. 2032 was calculated to be the year we would be finished constructing the features identified in the study. 2082 is 50 years in the future, which is designated as the core standard period of analysis. The measures within the alternatives were modeled so each measure's benefits could be identified. Frequency events ranging from the two year to the 500 year storm were modeled. Coastal storm surge was also modeled. Water levels were calculated for common frequencies, such as the 1% probability level, commonly called the 100 year level. Coastal flooding damages were determined for 2032 and 2082. Storm surge and wave characteristics were used to compute hydraulic design elevations for the proposed levee and flood walls in the final array of alternatives. 
We will continue to analyze the features of the tentatively selected plan as the study moves forward. This analysis will likely continue past the study phase into the pre-construction and engineering design phase. When analyzing the final array, USACE looked at the categories seen here. The PDT evaluated measures and alternatives in the final array and screened them based on their ability to meet the study objectives, avoid constraints and environmental impacts, and to maximize flood reduction benefits provided over the 50-year period of analysis from the years 2032 to 2082. The final array were also evaluated against the federal principles and guidelines criteria and their contributions to federal objectives and accounts. Once all of the analyses were complete, the remaining measures that were determined to meet screening criteria and that were independently combinable and cost effective with a benefit to cost ratio greater than one were moved forward for inclusion as a part of the comprehensive combined structural and non-structural plan that addresses flooding to multiple parts of the parish, or the TSP. They include a roughly 16-mile levee that stretches from West Slidell through South Slidell, a clearing and snagging on Bayou Patisat in Slidell, channel improvements on Mile Branch in Covington, and a large non-structural plan for floodproofing or elevating homes that are located within the 50-year floodplain across the parish. Per policy and guidelines for the Corps, this plan was selected based on the overall net benefits to the study area, as well as the benefit to cost ratio. The combination of measures had the highest net benefits and BC ratio for the parish. For more information on the screening of the final array and selection of the TSP measures, please see section four of the main report. For more information on the human and environmental impacts of the tentatively selected plan, please reference section five of the main report. The Marine report and all of the appendices are available on the USACE website. The entire parish had documented flooding in the 10, 25, and 50-year floodplain and is covered by the non-structural portion of the plan. Some areas have additional structural features that further reduce risk to those areas. Our largest structural feature for the tentatively selected plan can be seen here. It is, this is a close-up picture of the Slidell area as seen on the previous map. It is a 16-mile levee and flood wall combination that addresses coastal storm risk. Starting in the west, the structure runs along the northern border of Big Branch Wildlife Refuge, along the existing Oak Harbor levee, across Interstate 10, and north to tie into high ground. This structure will be built to the 1% annual exceedance probability with varying heights along the alignment. It will, we will discuss more details of the alignment in subsequent slides. As you can see, the structures outside of the levee that are within the 50-year floodplain are identified as a portion of the non-structural plan. This means that in the slide and subsequent slides, all of the purple dots are structures that are currently in the tentatively selected plan to either be raised or floodproofed. This is a close-up view of the western segment of the Slidell levee alignment. The alignment starts on the south side of Highway 190, crosses Bayou Liberty and Bayou Bonfuca, passes along the northern perimeter of Big Branch Wildlife Refuge, crosses the railroad tracks near Delwood Pump Station. It does largely consist of an earthen levee that ranges in elevation from 13 feet to 14.5 feet and has one small section of flood wall. As you can see, we will show a couple of purple dots for structures within the non-structural plan. We also have three yellow dots representing pump stations, as well as eight water control structures shown in pink. Continuing eastward into Slidell, the southern portion of the Slidell levee alignment can be seen here. It extends from the North Folk Southern Railroad along the Southern Oak Harbor Levee, crossing Interstate 10 and then connecting to the Lakeshore Estates Levee. It then turns north and connects with the Kings Point Levee. The levee continues north 
again terminating at Manzella Drive, which is high ground. This alignment will be a combination of levee and flood wall and have a varied elevation between 13 and 15 feet. As you can see, there is one pump station and multiple road ramps as well as water control structures within this alignment. As with the other slides, all of the purple dots are structures identified in the non-structural plan and currently slated to be raised or floodproofed. For information on all of the features in this levee alignment, please refer to the main report and the engineering appendix D. The second structural component for the tentatively selected plan is the clearing and snagging of Bayou Patisat and Slidell. Work will be located between Bayou Vincent Pump Station and Highway 11. It is approximately 900 feet of clearing and snagging that will occur within the channel. Material removed may be trees, debris, trash, and other obstructions within the waterway. This may seem like a small piece of the puzzle in the larger flooding dilemma, but this project carries with it a low cost and a benefit to cost ratio of over two. The small project will benefit roughly 30 structures. In the upper Chifuncta area, we will be completing channel improvements on the Mile Branch, which is a yellow line on the map. The Mile Branch channel improvements start at the intersection of Mile Branch and Highway 190, crossing Highway 190 business, and end at the intersection of Mile Branch and the Chifuncta River. This alternative consists of channel improvements over the lower 2.5 miles of Mile Branch. The channel bottom will be lowered by five feet approximately 20 acres of channel will be cleared and grubbed prior to mechanical dredging. We will also be removing and replacing culverts and possibly replacing bridges. Similarly to Bayou Patisat, these channel improvements have a benefit to cost ratio of over two and will be benefit roughly 250 structures. As mentioned on previous slides, the non-structural component of the tentatively selected plan is designed to raise or floodproof existing structures. This program will be voluntary and each home will be qualified on an individual basis. Appendix H in the draft report provides some initial information on the implementation plan and discusses some of the criteria that would be determined which structures are eligible. Parish-wide, we are currently estimating that 8,500 structures would be eligible. This is roughly 6,600 homes that will be potentially elevated to the 100-year heights, which is roughly 12 to 15 feet. In addition, approximately 1,800 businesses will be floodproofed up to three feet. It should be noted that through the analysis, we looked at the 10, 25, 50, and 100 year floodplains. The benefits are achieved by elevating or floodproofing to the 100 year flood event. The aggregation of structures for the economic analysis by floodplain should not be confused with the level to which the houses and businesses will be floodproofed or raised. Shown here are all portions of the tentatively selected plan or TSP. To recap, they are a levy for coastal storm risk management in Slidell, clearing and snagging in Bayou Patisat for riverine flood risk management also in Slidell, channel improvements to Mile Branch in Covington for flood risk management, flood proofing or raising of homes and structures within the 50 year flood plain, and that will be parish wide. More details can be found in the main report and appendices on the U USACE website. I'm now going to turn it back over to Everard Baker to discuss more on the study and its efforts to meet the National Environmental Policy Act's requirements. This draft St. Tammany report analyzes impacts for all the alternatives in the final array and measures. This slide is a snapshot or summary of the TSP alternative structural measures. For a detailed description of the TSP, please review the draft report. The various important resources analyzed are included on the top row of this chart, and the anticipated impacts are either not applicable, temporary, unknown, or permanent as a result of implementing the structural measures of the TSP, as well as the anticipated impacts to resources from borrow extraction. The resources marked NA are not believed to experience impacts at this time, but those in blue and gold are, are analyzed in detail by resource discipline in the draft report 
specifically in section three for existing conditions, section four and five for environmental consequences and environmental appendix C. Coordination with resource agencies began in January 2020 and is ongoing. Endangered species consultations are underway, as well as a wetland value assessment or WPA, which will collect site-specific habitat suitability index data for wetlands, pine hardwoods, and pine savanna. Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act Programmatic Agreement, NOI, was sent out in August of 2020, and the programmatic agreement was sent in May of 2021 to Louisiana State Historic Preservation Officer and other stakeholders. For the Clean Water Act compliance, the 404B1 evaluation is in progress, and the Section 401 Water Quality Certificate has been received from the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality. The Coastal Zone Determination has been submitted to the Louisiana Department of Natural Resources. A final full Phase 1 Environmental Site Assessment, or ESA, will be executed on the project prior to the signing of the Record of Decision, the final report if the project receives authorization and funding from Congress. I'm now going to turn the slides over to Amy again. We identified the tentatively selected plan for the St. Tammany Parish Feasibility Study in January of 2021. The draft report and TSB is currently undergoing concurrent reviews, including public, technical, legal, and policy reviews, as well as an independent external peer review. Public review ends July 26th of 2021. Please submit comments before this date. USACE will consider all of the comments from the concurrent views to inform the decision on the recommended bid plan and propose a way forward to complete the feasibility level design and final report. The study will ultimately end with a chief's report that may be transmitted to Congress for potential action. We are now going to go through some of the more frequently asked questions. These questions have been sent in or posed to us in a, as a part of this study process. One of the more commonly asked questions is what can be done about the flooding in my neighborhood? The authorization for this study limits us as the federal government to look at flood risk management and coastal storm risk management, which are actually very specific. We are not able to look at local drainage or development related flooding at, on the local scale. Throughout the course of the study, we have worked with and will continue to work with the parish and city leaders to address the concerns that fall within the purview of the federal authorization. A second common question we receive in regard to the non-structural plan is how do I know if my home is included? Currently, homes and businesses within the 50-year floodplain are eligible to be raised to the 100-year height, which is estimated to be 12 to 15 feet. We do expect refinements to the non-structural plan across the parish before the release of the draft report. This part of the study is not the final say in which homes will be included or excluded in the non-structural plan. In terms of implementation, this is a voluntary process. Each home will be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis after the study phase of the project is complete. More impl on implementation can be found in Appendix H. To be considered preliminarily, a structure must meet the following criteria. It must have a first floor elevation at or below the 0 to 50 year storm surge floodplain based on hydrologic conditions predicted in our 2032 period of analysis. Structures must also be outside of the area of influence of a structural feature recommended in the tentatively selected plan, and it must not be receiving flood risk reduction benefits from any other structural features. For example, the levee in South Slidell, Bayou Pass at Clearing and Snagging, or Mile Branch Channel improvements. Third, it must be economically justified, meaning that the cost of flood Blood proofing measure for the structure must not cost more than the total monetary value of the flood damages anticipated to be avoided in the 50 year period of analysis. The non structural elevations and flood proofing are voluntary. Property owners who have preliminary eligible structures that wish to participate in the flood proofing measures will be required to submit an application and provide a right of entry for their structure 
to undergo site assessment, appraisal, and other inspections and evaluations to determine the final eligibility of the structure. So this goes to show that while 8,500 structures are currently in the plan, we may modify this plan moving forward and further refinements are even expected after the study phase is complete. Finally, as a reminder, we have come to you, the public today, because we want to hear from you. How do you view the tentatively selected plan? Do you have any modifications or concerns regarding the plan? We would like to hear all comments, positive and negative. The best way to comment is in writing via email or mail. To submit your comments, please write in or email the address listed below. They can be found on the study webpage as well. We will be accepting comments through July 26 of 2021. We will be available for the next 30 minutes to answer comments within the chat box on this broadcast. Thank you for your attendance and we look forward to hearing from you.